Okay, I am excited because this morning we are testing my new <laughs> rock star mic. I feel like Madonna. Um, but I have noticed on my videos that the sound quality is not so good when I am further away from the camera and the mic, which I'm using for Zoom, which are in my computer. So we're giving this a try in hopes that it will be more clear when I'm demonstrating yoga poses and speaking from my mat. Yes, so if you don't already know me, I'm Blythe Stevens of A Blythe Coach, dance education and coaching to move through life with balance, grace, and power. And today's yoga practice will be centered around the theme of acknowledgement. So I'd like to you to take a comfortable child's pose with the knees together or apart. Let the belly and the torso just lay onto or between the thighs. The arms can come alongside the head or alongside the body behind you. Just a relaxed position that's very compact and where you can become aware of your breathing. And the way that we acknowledge one another in yoga practice, or one of the ways, is through our greeting, our salutation, or our goodbye of namaste. And namaste means, there's multiple interpretations, but one is that coming from the place of the highest and the best and the light within me, I recognize and greet and acknowledge that highest, best, light essence within you. And often we'll bring our hands together in front of the heart center and the Anjali Mudra, and becoming aware of the light within us and within all. We also do this in dance and in ballet and of course lots of disciplines do as well for example the martial arts have specific ways of greeting and acknowledging one another um, it might be a bow or a particular phrase that you say jesus said peace be with you and today we're going to come at our yoga practice from this concept. How can we be that light and that highest and best in ourselves as we meet the world? And how can we see that in others? It's sometimes easy to see not the best, the highest the light when we're interacting with others. So we'll sit in child's pose for another couple breath cycles and I will meet you on my mat. Today, I think we'll, we'll come back to child's pose towards the end as well. And along the way, you're going to also experience some sun salutations. You can also greet the light in the world, <laughs> literally. And it is the sun is rising here in Cologne. So that's the sensation I'm very present to. Or maybe you are saying good night to the sun and to the world. This practice is appropriate for that too. We'll be doing some warming things. Like I said, those sun salutations are a little more vigorous or can be. But then we'll end in a very nice unwinding and cooling and relaxing way. So we're here in child's pose. Arms 
Um, Common sense, I'm going to try that first. Okay, modify the cord a little bit, giving that internal massage to the organs. And just let the connective tissues, the joints, feel stretch. Perhaps in the shoulders or the hips. And then when we are ready on the next inhalation, we'll slowly roll up from the bottom of the spine through each vertebra up to the kneeling position. And then walk our hands out in front to all fours. I'm going to tuck the toes underneath, behind me, and rock our foot to create a stretch on the feet. Hold my hand to the feet. Have a good evening. Maybe you're stretching a lot after taking a set of shoes or standing or walking. Or even sitting. Now we're going to bring the left hand underneath the shoulder or even a little further towards the center line and peel the right hand up along the left, unfolding it like a wing in the sky. And then threading the fingertips through underneath the arm. We'll go into a twist for the shoulder, a little stretch for the shoulder and the spine, adjusting the supporting hand for leverage as desired. And bring the arms down back up. And replace the right hand down on the mat. And turn the favor. Left hand peeling up in the air. And thread that underneath and through. Laying onto the shoulder, the side of the head, and the ear. Absolutely keep connecting to the floor. And then inhale And exhale, place the hand back down on our feet both sides. Inhaling up. Exhaling through. Inhaling up. Exhaling up. And then up at the left. Exhaling through. And then up. And down. All right. Now take some cat cow. Lift the head and tail. Inhale. Exhale, lifting the and button. Several cycles. Going just like that, or bring the knees a bit wider, about the mat width apart if you're using the yoga mat, and start carving some circles with your cat and cow so we can rotate sort of a spiral action, opening the chest again in front, go back, open the chest, and Lifting the belly button as we sink back the hips towards the heels. Just a little more free form of exploration. Find that which works for you in your body today. So the highest and the best, <laughs> the light 
does not mean pushing, forcing, faking, or even making any particular shape or pose. It is going through the process and maybe showing up as our authentic self and being present with mindfulness in this very moment. That takes quite a bit of self-awareness and vulnerability. Now we're going to take some sun salutations. And again, since we're looking at the highest and best within each of us as an individual, we are not the same. <laughs> I would like to encourage you to find your best, most appropriate sun salutations. So maybe you're already cringing thinking of sun salutation because your wrists and hands get a bit fussy, or maybe it's your shoulders, or perhaps you feel like you don't have a, the upper body strength required to flow slowly through a chaturanga tadasana. That's all fun. I'm going to give you some options now, and I, I hope you'll find your best sun salutation in this way. So the Surya Namaskar A, since the first sun salutation, involves the following movements. We will first of all come up to standing, so toes under and slowly roll up and find your way to the front with the top of your mat. Looks like my arms are going to go out of the frame. I think I'll adjust that so you can see me Stretch overhead. I might have to move back a little bit. Come on, cameraman. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. We'll spread the toes along on the floor, bring the feet parallel and the hip joint to so kind of find out where the hip joint is by flexing the hip. And then let the legs drop straight down from that position. First position of our sensation is mountain. So we'll inhale and bring the arms up over the side to the top. Reaching up and possibly looking up. Your neck is not that usual, straightforward. So looking up does give it sort of an excellent and insulted feeling. Then we'll bring the arms down to the center to the Anjali Mudra, slicing down the center line to the front. Especially at the very beginning, but all throughout. I encourage you to softly bend the knees as we pull forward. So prioritize releasing the lower back and laying the upper body onto the thighs versus having straight legs and sort of being in a more hanging position. So this is a knees forward a little more forward. And this first time we'll shake our head. No, yes. Shaking the shoulder, relaxing the upper body over the stability of the legs. Then also with bent knees, or perhaps they will come to straight eventually. Depends on the day. We'll lift up to a half back, a halfway position, or a flat back. The whole back will flat and not that good. <laughs> And the hands can press into the top so the thighs and the hip joint to help us elongate from the crown of the head to the tail. So pulling those bits apart to create a long line as the tail. 
So bending the knees does, you can't help with that. And then release down. Today, so let's try the uh, 
So you're gonna know Star Warrior one, no warrior one. Let's try that sun salutation. That's your gonna Star A on the other side. So you can do it all on one side, but I like to alternate right and left just to create a little more balance between the sides of the body and connect perhaps the side of the brain. So inhale, my arms come overhead to the top. Exhale, and knees softly fold forward. Inhale, long flat back. Unfold into the front. Exhale. Release. So I step back to the right foot before this, and we'll take the left, either on flat palms or fists, or you could actually go to the forearms as well if you want to keep the wrist completely out of it. To our plank or our knees, and then to the knees, chest, and chin, or shifting forward into our chaturanga and asana. And then hands come underneath the shoulders and down to our cobra. And exhale to the floor. Tucking the toes under again from the knees or all the way up to the plank. Bending the hips up to the back. And I'm going to bring my feet flat left and right. Press away from the floor. Lift up to find length. And looking for between the hands, I'll either take two big steps forward, several little steps walking, or one big jump. Inhale, flat back, and exhale, go forward. And then roll up to the top. And exhale, hands lead back to the center. So now, just to get into the practice of it, finding the variations and modifications that suit you best, we'll go through the whole sequence on the right and the left again. So you're 
Friday is I want to fall, start to a yoga practice or entire yoga practice in itself. So our next practice. So let's take a look at Surya Namaskar B, the second sun salutation series. It is as such more complex. It does also involve our warrior one pose, which I talk about in more length in other videos, but I will speak a little bit about here as well. It changes from one side to the other within the sequence, and then we can also do the reverse. And there is more Chaturanga Dandasana flows. So those, you should always take your own best version, whether that's knees, chest, and chin to the floor, or the high push-up being a half push-up on the knees, not quite a plank. Uh, and the, the wrist modifications that I mentioned for sun salutation. A, so you can have flat hands on the floor or take fists to straighten out the wrist line or as you are moving, go directly onto the forearms to take a picture of the wrist. All good options. So we'll start at the top of the mat. Inhaling the arms over the side. But this time, actually not on the side. <laughs> come to the front of the mat. And as we inhale, the arms will come through the front and we'll sit back into our chair pose. So it might be helpful to start with our feet all the way together. Toes, big toes together, back of the heels slightly apart. And we'll sit back into our chair with the long spine from head to tail. Then we'll exhale and go forward. Laying onto the thighs, inhale to our flat back, big lift. Exhale, release. Inhale, we'll step back right and left, or multiple steps or not are also good options. To our high or our low plank. Which I mean here or here, or whichever rest modification you have chosen. And here's our first chaturanga movement, which you can open if it's not working for you or if it's not modify personalize. Inhale, you can have a cobra here, or we can continue further pressing up into an upward facing dog. That's an option. And we'll lift the hips up to the back, either rolling through or stepping through right and left to our downward facing dog. Long and light. With the next inhale, we'll let the right leg go long across the floor, and then lift it up high to the back, keeping the hips parallel as possible. So flat and pelvis. Two and three legs up, and then the knee will come towards the forehead, towards the chest as we step forward between the hands. If the foot doesn't want to step all the way forward between the hands without one step, no worries. You can also use the hand to bring it forward. We do want a 90 degree angle here. So nice broad stance here. Then the back foot will rotate, so we're no longer on the toes, but flat on the foot, especially that outer edge of the foot, pressing, spiking into the floor at about 45 degree angle, towards the front of the edge of our hat. And then we'll inhale and bring the body up, arms over the side, we're rolling up to our warrior one. Now how wide your warrior one is, 
It's totally customizable as well for me. I'll bring it a little narrower so I can bring my hips around to face the front a little more, keeping the length of my spine. Sinking into my front leg. That's all right. It's not about how I look so about how I feel. Sensing that whole length of the fingertips to heel. And then we'll exhale, we'll fold forward. And then back, we'll turn our back toes underneath us again to a lunge and bring that right leg back to our plank position or variation thereon. And more of our seconds to check on the leg. Inhaling to Cobra or Upward Dog. And exhaling. Pressing back to our Downward Dog. This time the left leg floats up into the back to Three Legged Dog. And that one tucks in the chest. And follows the forehead. And steps forward. Or again, you can assist. Same flip on the arm. So my left hand can bring the left foot forward, rotating the right foot flat to the 45 degree angle. And roll up to my warrior one on this side. And then exhale, we can come there, or also as we return to our plank, inhale here. Choose your proper variation on plank and on lower of the floor. And it could be straight down or knees, chest, and chin. And then knees. And then we'll to a cobra or upward facing dog. And then exhale. Down facing dog. And the other one we go to front. Stepping, walking, or jumping forward, left and right. Take a chair and release. We'll go through the left side now. Maybe a little bit more. Less inclination, more action. Inhale, chair. Legs in the floor. And we'll flat back. After we lift, exhale, we'll fold forward. Inhale, stepping left and right or jumping to our plank or variation. Exhale, lower and down. And then we'll cobra or upper dog. Exhale, press back to downward dog. Left and right. Left leg's going first this time. Flying up to a lower three-legged dog. And then tucking in and forward, rolling through the spine. And step the left foot forward. Right foot comes up and hand over one. And exhale, release. Back toes come under. Inhale, high time forward, low. Exhale, chaturanga or knees just chin. Inhale, cobra or upward dog. Exhale. Inhale, right leg flies at this time. And right leg comes in towards the chest. Left leg comes, foot, foot comes flat. Inhale. Warrior one. Exhale. Left toes come under my plank. And Chair. And feeling 
nice and warm. And that is an amazing workout. Just our Surya Namaskar A and B series. I'm going to take the B series one more time on the right and the left to round out my workout. My salutatory <laughs> acknowledgement. Trying to remain present to the best in myself and the light throughout the sun salutation practice and we'll bring that heat warm. And then as promised, we're going to bring it down to the floor and stretch it out and relax. So inhale, chair pose. Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, flat back. Halfway lift and release. Inhale, step back right and left. Or, of course, you can pop to your plank, high or back. Exhale to release to the floor. Inhale, cobra, upper dog. Exhale, push the hips up into the back. Right and left into our downward dog. Inhale, fly the right leg up. Exhale, fold it into the chest and step forward. Back foot comes flat. Inhale, warrior one. Exhale, release. Inhale, plank. Exhale, try on that work. Slow to the floor. Inhale, cobra, up the dog. Exhale, lift, and then release. Inhale, left leg floating up, three leg dog. Exhale, knee to nose, and forward. Inhale, flat to back leg, rolling up, warrior one. Inhale, 
exhale, lower. Release to the forearms if that's appropriate for you. 
And it changes the stretch. Little more cross up here, still hugging the muscles in towards the bones to support this action. Not totally passive, but a little more relaxed. And the stretch, feeling, I'm feeling stretching both hips, but in different spots. Hold it in the front of the right hip, but on the outside of the left. And then if you want to dive a little bit deeper in, you can either stack the fists and make like a pillow here. You could also put an actual pillow or a block or a cushion of some kind under your forehead. Or you can stack the palms and then that's a nice cushion for the forehead as well. A couple more breath circles here. Then we'll take our hands underneath the shoulders again, pressing up and up, rolling on the left hip. We can take our hands and our right leg in, and we'll switch them out. We'll do that whole side stretch, forward stretch, and kitchen stretch on the other side. So here I have my foot sole towards my left thigh. Sitting up on um, both sit bones, heavy and rooted and grounded in the pelvis. And then I'll send my right arm up and over on the left diagonal reaching. Out and then down. And long. And the inhale is deep on the exhale. Adjusting the angle of the head to gaze under the arm, all the way to the chest to the front, point to cross the foot down, they're all good. And then press to release, we'll rotate the upper body and face the extended leg, adjust our angle a little bit. So we can elongate over that extended leg in the direction of our toes. You can also stretch the foot here if that feels good, flexing and pointing, stretching the arch of the foot, and then focusing on our back through the bottom. And then to flip it up. Float back up and then taking the hands to the floor, we'll cross over that right leg, rotate onto the very top of that back knee, and then the back foot, adjusting our front leg, more perpendicular, more parallel to the back leg, or a bit of an opener. Pressing up for our frontal pigeon, moving up and out to the floor, hips, knees, blowing the upper body away from the floor, and then floating the hands back down to the floor, and coming on the arms out of this arm. Supporting the position of letting gravity assist. And again, if you'd like to come deeper, 
Sucking your fists, bringing the elbows down to the side. Or sucking the palms. And relax, or using a cushion on a block underneath the forehead. One more breath, so you go here.
As you're ready, move the fingers and toes. Expand the arms outside of the body. Into the room, sensing the temperature of the air. Space around us. And then we'll come over one side, left or right, curling into the wall, and then walking the hands up on the side to our seated positions, cross them up, just a cross-legged pose, and the place in which I would like to acknowledge you for showing up for yourself today in this practice and for others as you go through the world. The world needs your light and all the best that's already within you. It doesn't need to be created or more or come from elsewhere. It's already there. And thank you for sharing that. And if you'd like to take on a practice, of acknowledging others and noticing what that might have on your life as well. It can be a really interesting practice, not compliments for how we appear or what we've accomplished, although those are nice as well, but really honoring and acknowledging who you are being, who others are being in the world and the way they're contributing just by being there with you. Oh, thank you so much for being there for yourself first and then for others. The light in me acknowledges your essence and beauty. Namaste. Thank you so much. I will see you next time. And let me know if you have any questions. In the meantime, have a wonderful day.